How's it going YouTube? We've got to do a bit of work on the van. When I say a bit, I mean a lot. Let's go and have a look. Right, this van has done 250,000 miles and the engine's playing up. Right, this is a standard AXB 1.9 TDI engine that you get in these T5s. Uh, this particular one, this has had the head gasket done twice. I did it the last time uh, a few weeks ago and then the time before a few years ago. I'd, I put a recon head on it at that time, uh, but I'm still having issues with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this out. What we've got at the minute is water and oil mixing. Disgusting. To be honest, it's never been right from the first time I did the head gasket and I changed this head. Um, it must have done something to the block as well. It's probably done the rings or something like that as well because it's black smoke. It's always been like it ever since I've rebuilt it. We've also got a bit of water in the oil as well, as you can see there. I've not done many miles on this since I did the head gasket. I've probably done about 500 miles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this out. I'm not going to swap it for the same AXB engine because they're ridiculously priced and to be honest there's a stronger one that you can fit a lot cheaper. A common swap on these is the PD-130 swap. Uh, that's supposed to be the strongest engine of these 1.9 TDIs. Whether it is or not I don't know but that's what people say. So what I've done is I've got an engine here. This one is out of Skoda Fabia uh, VRS. This is the ASZ PD-130. Uh, this is supposed to be the best one to fit. Uh, one of the reasons being that if you get the uh, PD-130 out of the Golf, uh, what you find is this oil filter arrangement here, this sticks out too far and it hits the front of the vehicle. This one, the oil dipstick, will get in the way of the engine mount, so we'll have to do that when we get to it. Uh, but there's a few things that we need to swap off that engine to put on this engine. We'll go through that as we get to it. But what I'm going to do first is you can see this one, it's had a bit of an oil leak at some time in its life. Um, it's got some sealant on there. So I think it's had a cam cover oil leak and it's leaked all over the back of the engine. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll tidy that up. This has done 139,000 miles. The guy that I got this engine off is trustworthy. So the miles are accurate. Um, I've got a friend that's dealt with him a few times and uh, what he says goes. So what I'll do actually is I'll put a link down below of where you can get in touch with this guy because he strips these things and you can get these engines from him. So what I've got so far is I've got the engine. I've got a load of bits there to clean the engine, some degreaser and stuff like that, because while it's out, we might as well make it look nice, haven't we? Get it back so it's nice and spankily clean, then at least if it does have any oil leaks, I can see them later on so we can fix them. At the end of the day, this is an 139,000 mile motor, so it's not brand new. I don't expect it to be, but it has done half the miles that that one's done. I've also got an engine crane there. I'm going to build that up in a minute because what I need to do is build that up, lift that up so I can get around it and then I can give it a good clean. I've also got some more bits over here while I'm doing this. Uh, I've got a look clutch kit and dual mash flywheel. I've also got some flywheel bolts there because they're stretch bolts. Uh, while the gearbox is off and I've got to put my gearbox from that engine on here, I might as well do the clutch as well. I did the clutch in that one about four years ago. But to be honest, while it's here in pieces, I might as well just do it again. And then at least I know it's got a fresh clutch and a fresh dual mass. I was told that this engine has got a new, pretty new cam belt, to be honest. It's only been on about a year. And you can see there on the tensioner that it looks pretty new, to be honest. But I've bought one anyway. For the price of them, I might as well put a new set on and then it's done, isn't it? So I know it's got a new clutch, new, new dual mass flywheel and a new timing belt set. I've got some more gaskets and things down there. Uh, we need to swap the sump over as part of the swap. They don't have a sump gasket, so I've got some gasket stuff to stick it back on. I've also got a new expansion tank because mine is just completely full of oil. So I'll stick a new one on, sort that out later. So the first job for now is I need to build this engine crane, get all the unimportant bits off of this engine, because basically we just need the engine. Uh, there is some bits I will leave on it, uh, but there's a few swap bits that we need to change. There's basically anything electrical on this engine has to be taken off and the electrical bits from that engine will be put on this engine. There is one exception, but that's because I'm getting a custom map on it. Uh, these injectors are bigger for this engine. So I'm leaving these injectors in because I've got another friend that maps them. And what he's going to do 
is he's going to do a custom map for me because he's got exactly the same engine in his van with the same injectors and everything so he's going to do a custom map and we'll put it on that so we can run the pd-130 with the pd-130 injectors so it should run nice i'm going to stick to my turbo because these you can tune these to a good 200 brake horse at least um, i don't need it that powerful i'm going to tune it the same as that one uh, so it'll be about 150 and that is plenty for what the van needs just so i can get uphill without changing down through the gears i don't want to put too much stress on the gearbox uh, or the drive shafts because obviously everybody knows these are known for the drive shafts and the gearbox going and that one has got a recon gearbox on it uh, which i fitted four or five years ago so first job let's get this clean and let's have a look at it Right, let's have a look where we're at now. Um, I've taken everything off the engine, uh, so it's basically just a block there really, same round the other side. I've got all the bits off it, I've cleaned it right up, uh, it looks a lot better now than what it did. Same round the back, it's cleaned up quite nice. Uh, what I'll do is all these bits here, I'll stash these to one side, and once we've got the engine out of that, then we can decide which bits from that engine or this engine we're going to put on this one. Another thing I noticed when I took it off is this is the oil filter that was on that engine. If we have a look at this gasket, I've got a brand new one here. Uh, this one, if we look at it, is exactly the same. So I'm assuming that my oil filter and everything should fit this one. Um, I'd like to use mine mainly because the oil cooler and everything else on mine is brand new. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tidy all this lot out of the way and the next job is we need to get this engine out. Sorry, I've just noticed my lens is all smudgy. So we've got to take the whole front of the van off and then that'll expose the engine so we can get the engine out. I'm not going to go through that step by step because I just want to get that done to be honest but I will stop time to time just to have a look, see where we are. The main things I want to mention is what we have to do to this engine to get it in the van. So I'm going to get on with that now and let's get that to pieces. I'm at a point now where I've got all the front of this off. This was fairly straightforward, to be honest. It took me a while, though. Uh, but there's just a few bolts there and a few bolts down there. And then, obviously, undo all the pipework and everything. And then the front pulls off all in one piece like that. Uh, one thing I have noticed that while I'm here is I've got a bit of a banana radiator. You can see it right down there at the back. So what I've got to do is while I've got this off, I might as well change that radiator for a new one. It's a bit of a pain because I've got to strip all the other ones out of the way. It is a bit of a banana, so I should do it really. Although it's not leaking now, you can guarantee if I don't do it, within another couple of months it'll be leaking, then I'll have to strip the whole thing off again so I can do it. So I might as well do it now. What I've been doing as I've been going along is I've got these little tubs look and I've been putting all the various bolts in those tubs and labelling them up just so I know where everything goes again later. But to be honest, I'm completely making this up as I go along, so I'm just taking things off as I find it. So what I need to do is make a bit of room in there, because obviously the next thing is get the engine out. So I need to get rid of all that, and then I need to start disconnecting things around the engine. And what I'll do is I'll get everything disconnected, I'll get a strap around it, I'll take the weight, and then it's literally, you just do it really slowly just making sure that there's no wires or anything else connected. Just leave it dangling. The more time you spend looking around it, the better, because obviously the last thing you want to do is pull that engine out and something's still connected. So I'm literally going to get my spanners on it now and just start taking things off. I've got my phone and I'm taking plenty of photos I go along just to remind me of which pipes which. Just like this one for example, this little tandem pump one. You've got this one that's got the diesel going in at the top and then you've got one there that's going down at the bottom. But you can guarantee once I've taken all those off and pushed that out of the way, when I come back I might get them mixed up. So I'm taking lots of photos on the way of things like that. So let's get this engine out because the next thing after that is taking all the bits off that engine and putting back what we need on that one over there. 
I'm taking my time doing all this because I don't want to just rush through it and then I'll forget where everything goes so I'm doing it nice and steady. I also want to clean everything as I go. Uh, I want to get all that engine bay a bit cleaner than what it is. I'll never get it perfect but while I've got a chance I'll get it looking a bit tidier and a bit nicer than what it is now. Because obviously this engine's had a really bad oil leak at some point. Uh, it's got oil and water mixing now obviously so it's a bit of a mess. So I need to get all that tidied up as well. And now I've got the engine to the point in where it's just about ready to come out. I've literally, I've got all the wiring down here. All the pipe work I've taken out and moved that out of the way. I've been moving everything out of the way as I can. Uh, I've taken the inlap manifold off so I could get around the back and undo the exhaust pipe at the back. Uh, so now just about everything's off. The only thing I've got left to try take off is the drive shafts. I've got to undo the hub at the bottom so I can bend it out to get the drive shaft out. Then I'll remove the drive shafts. Uh, once they're out, then it's literally just the engine mounts and I can start lifting it out slowly. One thing I did notice, uh, just here on the clutch slave cylinder, uh, as soon as I undid this rubber bit that was around the back, it started weeping from this point here. Uh, it's a good job I saw it actually. Uh, you see there, look, there's a bit of a flat spot on it there where it's been rubbing on something and that's where it's weeping from. I disturbed it and it just started dripping out of there. So to be honest, that was probably about to go any time anyway soon. So it's a good job we've seen that now. It's got another flat spot over there as well. I don't know what it was rubbing on, uh, but I'll make sure it's not rubbing on anything because when I get a new one and I'll put it back because that goes round the back of the engine, goes across there. And then I don't know if you can see it, but just in the back of there, that's where it connects to. So I need to get a new one of those pipes. So I'll, I'll start looking for those and I'll get one of those. So while I'm at this point, I need to get one of those, fuel filter, uh, some more service bits, radiator, because I've got a banana radiator, as you can see there. So I need to get that radiator. I'm going to tidy up for today because I've had enough for today. Tomorrow morning, I'll take the drive shafts off and I'll undo these engine mounts and I'll pull the engine out. We'll put it in the garage and then we'll start stripping the bits off it, what we need to put on that engine and we'll make a good engine out of the two. So that's all we're going to do for this video. Next video, I'm going to rip this engine out. We'll get the new one built up and hopefully we'll get it back in again and running. I'll catch you again later. Cheers.